My name is Edna DeVore. I'm the Director of Education and Public Outreach for the SETI Institute. And today we have a spacesuit here at our Science Day for children and adults to try on and uh, feel like an astronaut. The suit that we have here is intended for these kinds of public um, events. And it probably weighs about 50 pounds total when you get it all on. A real spacesuit would weigh about 250 pounds. And what's the difference? Well, a real spacesuit would have many more layers of materials that are designed to protect the astronauts from the vacuum of space and from particles and other kinds of things that could injure the astronaut. This space suit has gloves and pants with feet, a helmet with a mylar covered visor. And actually, when we see this gold mylar helmet, we think about you know, the protection of the astronaut's face from ultraviolet radiation and so on, so he doesn't get a sunburned face when he's out in space or walking on the moon. From inside the helmet, you can see just fine. It's like having a whole face sunglass. The body part of the suit itself that we see here has an oxygen pack on the back for recirculating breathed air. Sleeves and arms, all the controls on the front in a way that the astronaut could get to them. And as I said before, if this were a real spacesuit, it would weigh about 250 pounds. And we wouldn't be able to lift it on and off of people, especially children, very well. So this is a model. But it has all the same characteristics and the same kind of look as a real spacesuit. My name is Seth Shostak. And I am a senior astronomer here at the SETI Institute, S-E-T-I. That's an acronym. And it stands for the Search for Extraterrestrial Intelligence. So we're trying to do here what Jodie Foster did in the movie Contact, which is to say, to try and find out if there's any intelligent life in the universe besides what you find here on Earth. Now, I think that most Americans believe that aliens probably exist. Uh, but they also believe, at least a great number of them, that the aliens not only are out there in space, but they're actually here on the planet, occasionally abducting people for unauthorized experiments. Uh, I don't personally believe that. I doubt that many of my colleagues do. But we do think that it's very likely that what's happened on this planet has happened probably many, many times throughout the universe. Keep in mind that there are 10,000 billion, billion stars that we can see with our telescopes, and the number of planets is probably larger than that. So if what's happened here on Earth is something very special, uh, even so, there are so many other worlds that it's probably happened elsewhere as well. So the question is, how could we find them? We can't go to these other worlds. I don't think they're coming here. So what we do is we use the best physics and astronomy that we have to try and find the aliens at home, as it were, by eavesdropping on signals they might be broadcasting our way, either radio signals, flashing lights, things like that. So those are the kinds of experiments that we do here at the SETI Institute that are really SETI, the search for extraterrestrial intelligence. Now, people will ask me at cocktail parties here in Mountain View, well, have you heard anything yet? And of course, the answer is no. Had we heard something, I wouldn't be talking to you this way today. You would have been reading about it in the papers for a long time and seen it on CNN. But in fact, we are building new telescopes that are greatly speeding up the search. And I'm myself rather sanguine, rather optimistic that we may find something in the next couple of decades. You'll have to just stay tuned, as we will, to find out whether that's true. The SETI Institute also has a complete range of other studies, other research, which is trying to get at the nature of life. And could we find life elsewhere, even in our own solar system? Not necessarily intelligent life in this case. For example, everyone knows that Mars might have life, might have had life in the past when there was liquid water on its surface. But Mars is not the only nearby locale where you might find a little bit of biology. There are at least three, three moons of Jupiter that probably have very large liquid oceans. They could be sterile. They could have some life in them. We'd like to know. There are a couple of moons of Saturn that seem to have at least the possibility for supporting life. We'd like to investigate those. So there are lots of other areas of research that are pursued here at the SETI Institute by a team of somewhere between 50 and 60 scientists. This is cutting edge research, the search for life on other worlds. And the facts are that it is headquartered right here in Mountain View. My name is Doug Vakoch from the SETI Institute. I'm the director of interstellar message composition here. And I lead our efforts to try to determine what in the world would we say to ET if we ever make contact. Um, one of the greatest challenges is trying to figure out what kind of language we would use. I mean, they're not going to know English or Swahili or Chinese. So then what do we use as a universal language? And then 
perhaps even more important, once we know how we would communicate, what would we want to say? If we want to communicate with someone on another world, what would we want to say? And how could we go about saying it? The trick is, um, the trick to communicating with life on another world is that we need to figure out some language that both we and they have in common. And math may be an excellent starting point. If you're going to create a radio telescope, your engineers probably need to know at least that 2 plus 2 equals 4. And once we can communicate that, the interesting thing is you can go on and explain even something like what's our sense of beauty because even something like music has a very mathematical basis to it. Maybe we could even say something about our sense of morality and ethics because some of our sense of what it means to care for one another can be described in very biological terms, uh, in terms of um, numbers, in terms of exchanging, in terms of sharing, whether that's sharing information or sharing something that's important for another civilization to survive.